All right, we had just a little bit of homework over the weekend. It was worksheet, uh, the work worksheet, questions one to four. The answers are up on the board right now. Uh, have a look at those and see if you've got them right or wrong or if you need anything gone over. Uh, one question that I've already got from somebody is, uh, wouldn't it be to two significant digits instead of three significant digits? Because, say, look at number two. It says a 1.00 times 10 to the 3. That's three digits. This much work is on a 5.0 kilogram object. That's only two digits. 12.0 meters, three digits. What's the net force? Three digits, two digits, three digits. Final answer should be two digits, right? Except that in question number two, I didn't actually use that five kilogram object, the mass of it, 5.0 kilograms. So of all the data that I used, it was three digits and three digits, right? Now, I probably wouldn't do that to you on a test. Okay, if I did, Jacob, I'd probably honestly give you, uh, give you credit if you put two digits or three digits. Because that's, I mean, that would be a trick, if I did that on purpose, at least. Um, but understand that it is three digits, because it's, we go back to original data, but it's all actually the original data that you used, instead of just all the data that's in the question. Okay. Any issues there, one to four? Should we go over any of them? Yep. Four. Okay. One. Two. One, two, four. One. Uh, four. One two, and three. So let's go over all of them. All right. That's okay. All right. Number one says a two kilogram toy is pushed with a force of 10 newtons and then go 30 degrees over 4.5 meters. How much work is done on the box? What's the box's change in energy? What type of energy does the, the box have, the toy have before it's pushed? And what type of energy does the toy have after it's been pushed? Uh, there's a lot of stuff here, actually, and there's only one answer there. So why do I only have one answer there? Well, Let's first of all get the work done for number one. Work is equal to F times D times cosine theta. We're using the cosine theta in this question because we have an angle of 30 degrees between the way that it's pushed and the way that it moves. The force here is 10 newtons. The displacement is 4.50 meters. And we're going to say uh, cosine 30.0 degrees there. When I multiply those together, I end up getting 39.0 joules. That's the work done. That's the first part of the question. Now, it also says, what's the box's change in energy? Well, the reason I didn't write that down twice is because the change in energy of the box is the work done on the box. So if the answer to the work is 39, then the answer to the change in energy is also 39. What type of energy does the box have before it's being pushed? The box is sitting there, or the toy is sitting there. What kind of energy does it have as it's sitting there, waiting to be pushed, Carrie? Why is that potential? Because it's got its weight? Eh, it's on the ground, though, right? Does that have potential? No, it doesn't, actually. The toy doesn't have any energy, right? It's got zero. Now, something has to get it moving, but it's not the potential energy of the toy that gets it moving. It's the potential energy of whoever pushes the toy, right? It's the potential... If I push the toy, it's the potential energy that's stored in my body, not the potential energy that's stored in the toy that gets the toy moving. Does that make sense? All right. And finally, the last part of the question says, what type of energy does the toy have after it's been pushed? The answer for that one is, that one's easier. Which one's that one? Yep. Yep. No, after it's been pushed, it has, right, it's moving, right? It's got kinetic energy. Good. Two, 1,000 joules of work is done on a 5-kilogram object moving at 12 meters. How much force is required to do this? Well, we're going to say for this one, uh, W is equal to F times D. And assuming that you're pushing it in the direction that it moves, which doesn't say otherwise here, so we have to assume that, then we're just going to use W is equal to F times D. Rearrange that to solve for F. Take the D bound down by dividing. It becomes W over D. W is 1,000 joules. The displacement is 12 meters, 12.0 meters. Divide those two to get, divide those two, and we get 83.3 newtons. Now that changes if, it, if we're pushing it at an angle, right? but it doesn't say that, so we have to assume that we're pushing it the way that it moves. Number three. Three is the same question. 
thousand joules of energy is gained. Oh, isn't that isn't work equal to the change in energy? Right, that's the way we defined work. Work is defined as the change in energy. We call that, by the way, the work energy theorem. The work energy theorem when we say W is equal to delta E. So number three, we do it exactly the same as you do number two. The answer is 83.3. And finally, number four says a 1,300-kilogram car begins at rest. I'm going to write down some givens for this one. A 1,300-kilogram car begins at rest. That's going to make VI equal to zero meters per second. and accelerates to a speed of 60 kilometers per hour over a distance of 200 meters. That would mean our displacement is 200 meters. What's the work? What's the work done? There's two ways to go about doing this. How many people got this, by the way? Good. There's two ways to go about doing it. I'm curious if anybody did it either way, one way or the other. Um, the most obvious way is to say, look, W is equal to F times D. No angle here, so we just say W is equal to F times D. We know what D is. That's pretty clear, right? But we don't know what F is. So we can find it by saying F is equal to M times A. But we don't know what A is. But we can find it by saying VF squared is equal to VI squared plus 2AD. Solve for A. So we say VF squared minus VI squared over 2 times D equals A. Plug in your values there, get a value for the acceleration, and then once you have that, multiply it by the mass to get the force, and then once you have that, plug it into here, multiply it by the displacement of 200 meters to get the work, which is 1.81 times 10 to the 5 joules. How many people that got the correct answer did it that way? Nobody? Really? Oh, I'm excited then, actually, because the second way that I was thinking of, I like better. I just thought that people would come up with this way first. Here's the second way. We say W is equal to delta E. By the way, when you do this, the F has to be in what units? Yep. Meters per second, so it's 60 times 1,000 divided by 3600 gives you meters per second. All right, delta E, um, we're not even going to use F times D here. We're going to use final minus initial energy. In fact, the final energy is kinetic energy because it's moving, right? The initial energy is zero. It's not doing anything. So we can say W is equal to one half of the mass, 1.30 times 10 to the 3, times VF squared, which is, okay, whatever, 60 times 1,000 divided by 3.6 is, square it, and we still get 1.81 times 10 to the 5 joules. How many people did it that way? A couple people? Okay, good. I like that way. Okay, I, I really like that way, but I, I, didn't, I didn't show you a question like that as we were going over examples. So that's good. If you come up with that way, that's, that's insightful. That's really good. Um, that's an efficient way of solving that problem, right? No better, I wouldn't say, really, than the first way, but it's certainly more efficient. Did anybody do it some other way? Other than the two ways we have up on the board? All right. All right, then. On Friday, we also talked about power. We introduced power as being the rate at which work is done. We had uh, two people as examples. I think it was you, Bryant, and Haley, was it? We said they live beside each other. They're shoveling identical driveways. We get lots of snow. We weren't too far off, actually. Okay, we were one day off of the snow, right? We said Saturday morning it's going to snow. Turned out it snowed on Sunday. Um, they both have to shovel the same amount of snow. Haley shoveled it in a third the time that Bryant shoveled it. Who did more work? Well, you guys correctly identified that they both did the same amount of work. Okay, they applied the same average force over the same average displacement. Same amount of work. So if we want to hire somebody, 
How do we quantify the fact that Haley was a lot quicker than Brian? Well, we use power. Power was the rate at which work is done. Now, anything that's a rate, anything that's a rate, has time on the bottom. So power is going to be work over time since it's the rate at which work is done. Work is measured in joules. Time is measured in seconds. So the energy for power would be joules per second, or we could also say it's a watt. I don't think I asked you this question on Friday. Is power a vector or a scalar? Does power have a direction associated with it, Stephanie? No. No, power is a scalar. It's a scalar, work, divided by another scalar, time. So scalar divided by scalar is a scalar. Now, I asked you over the weekend to do a simple little activity at home. Run up the stairs. Measure the height of the stairs and time yourself to see how long it took you to run up the stairs. How many people did that? Brian, what did you get your power output to be? Yeah. Okay, 1.1 times 10 to the 3 watts. So Brian is about one and a half times stronger than a horse. For about three seconds that he ran up the stairs, right? Tyler, what would you get? 780? So, uh, that should be, ju uh, no, watts. Watts. So Tyler is just barely stronger than a horse. That's still pretty impressive, though, Tyler, right? Stronger than a horse, at least for a couple seconds that it took you to run up the stairs. Anybody else? Who else did that? I can't remember who had their hand up. Loose? 598? No, about three, three quarters as strong as a horse. Not bad. Hey, not bad. Now, how do they get these numbers? Well, if they wanted to find the power output of their legs as they ran up the stairs, then they'd use the equation power is equal to work over time. Time was easy. All they had to do is measure that with a stopwatch or their iPhone, right? How long did it take you to run up the stairs? Sorry? 0.9? Holy cow. How, how high are your stairs? Okay, so not very high. 50 meters, how long did it take you to run up? Two seconds. Tyler? Three meters. How long did it take you to run up? Three seconds. Okay. Um, the time is easy to measure, right? We just use our stopwatch. Although when you're dealing with a time as small as 0.9 seconds, the reaction time can be can be pretty significant. When you're doing it yourself, though, you're kind of predicting when it's going to start and stop. So it's easier to get a good time when you're doing it yourself. There. Um, we get the time. The work we also have to find. The work is equal to F times D, but it's also equal to delta E. And the final energy when we reached the top of the top of the stairs was MGH. The initial energy, well, so when you were at the bottom of the stairs, your initial energy was what? Right. So it would be final energy minus initial, right? just like we did in that last example question, except it was kinetic minus zero instead of potential minus zero, divided by the time. You know your mass, you know 9.81, you measure your height, you measure your time. You do the math there, and you're going to get 1,100, 780, or 598, depending upon depending upon how strong your legs are. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, what's the number for pounds to kilograms? Um, we say that um, uh, one pound is equal to 0 0.454 kilograms. So if you want to convert your pounds to kilograms, um, let's say you have, I won't ask anybody's weight, because some people don't like to give out their weight. That's okay. okay. If your weight is, let's say, 120 pounds, we've set it up as a ratio here. 1 over 0 .55, 0 0.454 equals 120 over x. The x goes up, the 0 0.454 goes up, so it becomes 120 times 0.454, which equals, I don't know, something like uh, something like 50-ish. Got that? So your mass times 9.81 times the height, which is going to vary for each of you, divided by T. Quick question, guys.
Bryant got the highest power output. He also had the smallest time. Is it conceivable that somebody could be slower than Bryant, but yet still have a higher power output? Is that possible? It wasn't, it didn't happen in this case, but is it possible, Stephanie? Yes, it is. So what would the situation be where that would happen, where they have a higher power output, but yet they were slower than Brian? Yeah, they weighed more, right? So they had to do more work. So if we go back to our analogy with shoveling the driveway for a second, okay, Haley shovels it in 45 minutes. You shoveled it in three hours. You took four times the amount of time. Your power output was lower, but your power output was lower because you had to do the same amount of work. If your driveway was five times bigger and it only took you four times more time, then your power output is still higher than Haley's, right? So it's that combination, it's that, that balance of the time along with the amount of work that you do. And your work, in this case, running up those stairs is based on a couple of things, your mass and the height. Brian did it in 0.9 seconds. Well, he didn't have very many stairs either, right? His power output still ended up being the highest, but it doesn't have to be just because he has the lowest time. Okay, that good? All right, well, here's what I'd like you to do right now, guys. I'd like you to take a look at your uh, worksheet booklet that I gave you last week on Friday. And I'd like you to take a look at the first five questions on that uh, worksheet booklet. Questions one to five on your power booklet. Sorry, on your power worksheet which is the second worksheet in that booklet. Questions one to five. 